It is Monday after spring break at, for us at the main campus, um, April 12th. We are on Module 3, Lesson 6, so Book of Luke. And you can see on my screen, it is, I'm going to present the whole thing here. We're in quarter four. We are already in week number three, and we're on Lesson 6. So let's dive in. Here is Mr. Uh, Coach Cook. He answers this question. Somebody asked, when you ask God for something, why doesn't it happen every day? So let's find out what he says. Here we go. Hey, fifth and sixth grade. It's Mr. Cuck here trying to answer the question. When you ask God for something, why doesn't it happen every day? Um, but first of all, it's great that you're asking God for things. God wants us to come to him and treat him like... Um, a father. He's our father and he wants to give us things. He has given us so much and he wants to keep giving us um, the things that we need and the blessings that are going to be best for us in our lives. But we don't always get what we want, so why not? Well, have you ever seen the movie Aladdin or any other kind of TV show that's got a genie in it? What usually ends up happening to uh, the people that are making these wishes and then he, the genie gives them exactly what they wish for? Um, does it go well for them in the long run? Usually, it doesn't take too long before the genie has kind of manipulated their wish into, be, into being uh, something bad for them. Um, I wish to be the richest person in the world. And uh, they get all this money, but then they have all these people asking them for things or people trying to steal their money, and they get all sorts of extra problems instead of the good thing that they were that they thought they were wishing for. And the reason for that is people, you, me, wishers, uh, we're selfish and we think of ourselves more than anybody and we don't really see the consequences of what we want uh, in our own minds when we're trying to think about uh, the things that we want because we're impulsive, we're selfish, we just want like the thing that's going to satisfy us in that moment. Um, and so if God just gave us that kind of stuff all the time, it might not work out so well for us in the long run anyway. Um, so God's not a genie. He doesn't just give us what we think we want. He's, he's bigger than that. He's smarter than that. Um, also, genie, you know, with a genie, it's got one person wishing for something at a time. Um, and I know for you basketball players out there, you know, sometimes we can pray for a win in a basketball game. We want to win this game. What about the other team that's praying the exact same thing? Can both teams win? Um, so God's listening to everybody and the entire world's prayers and putting all the pieces in place for His plan, which is perfect to have, to work out for everybody. Two, win, two teams can't win a basketball game, but maybe the, sec, the team that lost can learn from it and grow from it or uh, take some self-evaluation and become better from that loss. And so that's how God is blessing him. God always answers our prayers with yes, no, or later. And, you know, maybe those no's, we don't like them at the time, but maybe he's actually saying, I've got something better for you. You don't know what's best for you. You don't know exactly what you want. I have something better for you because I've said no to this thing that you want. Um, so trust God, trust your Father in heaven, and keep asking him for that stuff and, and learn from his answers. And uh, that's why when you ask God for something, it doesn't happen every day just like that. It's even better. Have a good day. All right. Thanks, Coach Cook. Guys, we're going to pray. Did you know these people had birthdays in April? Hey, Ava, Aiden, and Queen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday Woo! Yes. Happy birthday. So excited for you guys. Hey, let's pray. If you're in fifth grade, pause it here and pray. If you're in sixth, pause it here and pray. Go ahead. All right, Book of Luke, Module 3. You see the timeline there um, leading to the cross. That is what the Book of Luke is all about. All right, we're going to keep going, and here's our verse. I'm just going to pause it for a second. Lele, can you come here, please? Lele, come quickly. Honey, you need to stay outside because the door keeps slamming, okay? So go outside and play and stay out. Thank you. Love you. Here we go, guys. Here's our verse. I want you to do it. I'm going to do it once, and I want you to then repeat every time. So I'm going to say a part of it. I want you to repeat it, okay? 
You ready? I'll pause. You repeat. Let me start. Here we go. Ready? But I say to you who here. Let's go. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Repeat it. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To the one who strikes you on the cheek. Offer the other also. And from one to take away your cloak. Do not withhold your truth either. Let's go. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods. Do not demand them back. And as you wish that us would do to you, do so to them. Hey, nice job, guys. Okay, I want you to practice that verse so you guys get it. What should you do to those who beg from you? You should give to them. Write that down. Pause it if you need to. I'm going to keep going. What should you do if someone takes your things? Go ahead, call on somebody. What should you do? Do not demand your things back. Whoa, that's a hard one. So if people beg for me, I should give. And if people take my things, don't demand them back. Yikes, I demand my stuff back. I need to follow this verse. Probably because I have everything I need in Jesus. How should you treat others? How should you treat others? What's the answer? Treat others as you wish to be treated. You guys, Lele just came in because remember I just told her to stay outside. <laughs> and she came in and she held up two fingers to show me that she has to use the bathroom. <laughs> what a little funny girl. She's so cute. Um, but she did it silently, so I'm glad. What is our pattern statement? Do you guys remember? Yeah, circumstances can influence people and events producing change. Make sure you have that written. Pause it if you need to. Here we go. Today we're going to identify main events in a text and order them on a plot line. We are going to read this text together and then we're going to watch the video of it and then we're going to do our plot line and I'll show you how to do your exit ticket. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to let you guys read this together and then when you're done reading this page, pause it. Or, I mean, Go to the next slide. Here we go. Okay, you should be done reading this verse to verse 40. Now go ahead and read this section. Pause the video. Okay, great. Let's watch this clip and then we'll do our plot line. Here we go. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town, who lived a sinful life, learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. 
you did not give me a kiss. But this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. Lele, no. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. Really? The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Okay, sorry for the interruption by Lele. Um, guys, so now what we're going to do is we are going to create a, pro a plot line. So take out your paper. And Lele just wanted to be part of the action, so she decided to play a flute and do a, make a bunch of noises in the background. Sorry about that, guys. All right, so right now we are going to use this paper. Now mine at the top says the lily cupboard. That's wrong. Yours says something different. But let's go ahead and dive in. What, and I'd love for you guys to share out with the teacher that's in your room today, uh, who are the characters in this text? Who are the characters? Go ahead, pause the video, and share out. Who are the characters? Okay, great. You should have written down something like um, the Pharisees, Simon, the woman, and Jesus. Hey, um, somebody said in, in one class, the money lender, uh, that's supposed to be an N by the way, I just did a little swoop at the end. The money lender is inside the story that Jesus is talking about, but he's not in this actual room. Jesus is talking about a money lender, so we're not going to include him here because he's not a character in the room, okay? Where, speaking of the room, what is the setting? Where and when does the story take place? Let's see. Well, it's definitely during the day because they're eating a meal. So I'm just going to say day slash meal. And where is it taking place? Well, it is in a house, but whose house? Do you remember? Go back to the text if you need to. Pause the video. Okay, you good. It's the Pharisee's house. All right, let's think about the problem or the goal. Whenever we use the word goal, whenever we hear the word goal, we're going to use the word want. Did somebody want something here? Let's see. Did the Pharisees want? Well, they wanted Jesus to come over, but that's not really the whole point. Um, did Simon want something? Well, Jesus talked to Simon and kind of told him a parable. Um, did the woman want something? Oh, yeah, she actually did. Um, so she wanted a couple things. So let's just think about this. She wanted to show Jesus that she loved him. Um, she also wanted him, uh, she wanted to wipe his feet. Why though? I think she couldn't believe that Jesus accepted her, even though she was so sinful. And she wanted to change. Um, but most of all, I think she wanted to be forgiven. So I'm going to put um, the woman wanted to be forgiven. Of her sins. Now, it's important to note that she did not wipe Jesus' feet because she was trying to prove to him that she would do something to be forgiven. She just loved him so much and couldn't believe um, how much he loved her. Okay, so you could also argue here the woman wanted um, to show how much she loved Jesus. So I'm just going to think about that because this is my work right now and I'm just writing this down. The woman wanted to show how much she loved Jesus. Okay, I'm thinking about that as I go through this. Um, now my first event, let's see, what's the first thing that really happened here? Um, I think the first main event is, I guess, let's just think about this for a minute. Um, is it that Jesus, well, what happened in the story? Jesus told a parable. Is that the first thing that happened? Well, no. Um, was it that the Pharisees 
were shocked that Jesus allowed this woman to touch him? Yeah, uh, maybe. Did Jesus forgave the woman? Um, how about just the woman came in and started wiping his feet? So the woman wiped Jesus' feet with oil or ointment, I guess you could say. Oil and tears. And her hair, too. <laughs> okay, so now the second thing. After she wiped um, his feet, what happened? Pause it if you need to. What happened? I think I'm going to write that the Pharisees were surprised. The Pharisees were surprised that Jesus allowed this. Remember, she was real sinful. She probably was like a prostitute or somebody that was um, not living for the Lord. And she's coming in and wiping his feet. Normally, sinners like this weren't allowed to be in the presence of teachers um, because they weren't following the law, right? But it seems like she wants to change. She can't believe somebody as powerful as Jesus would love her. Okay, the next event. Let's see. First, she wiped his feet. Then the Pharisees were surprised that Jesus did this. What did Jesus do next? I think the next thing was that he told a, do you remember? A parable. So Jesus told a parable uh, about two men who owed, who owed money. And one owed a ton and one just owed a little bit. And Jesus said, who do you think loved more? The one who got forgiven of a ton of money or just of a little bit of money? And Simon answered and said, well, I think the one who owed more money, who didn't have to pay back more money, that guy loved more. And Jesus said, you're right. And so people who are forgiven of more sin tend to love Jesus even more. Interesting. Um, so Jesus tells the parable and then what happens? I think Jesus, ex let's see what happens after he tells the parable. I think after he tells the parable, he explains the parable. Well, let's think about this for a second. Um, I think Jesus, the woman, I'm gonna review this cause I gotta think about this. Woman wiped Jesus feet with her hair the Pharisees were surprised. Jesus told a parable. I think the next piece is going to be the climax, guys. Uh, I think the climax is going to be. I'm gonna. I'm. I think I'm gonna skip these. So can you cross off four, five, and six? And I think the climax is Jesus forgives the woman. So let's write this down. Jesus forgives the woman. Great. Then my resolution is going to be that Jesus explains that the woman is showing her gratitude for being forgiven. Like she's, he's saying, she is wiping my feet with her hair. She hasn't stopped since the moment she's come in. So Jesus explains that the woman, it, oops, woman is thankful she is forgiven. Great. My denouement is the very, very end. And my denouement is going to be um, the phrase at the end. Is the phrase at the very end, your faith has saved you, go in peace, goodbye, I forgive you, you are special love. Do you guys remember what the phrase at the end was? Go back and look. Okay, it's this. Write it down. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Pause the video, write that down, and I'm going to move on. Okay, pause the video if you need to. Your last task for today is going to be to go here to your exit ticket that was posted, and your job is going to be to complete these responses. Now, guys, we just walked through all of this together. 
Um, so at the top of the exit ticket, you're going to have your verse, and you're going to work on that right now. When you're done with your verse, you're going to come down here and do the pattern statement. Circumstances can influence people and events producing change. Then here's the text, and it says, who are the characters? We've already done it on this document right here. So now you're going to use your notes right here, and you're going to choose the correct answer here. All right? Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Bye-bye.